Hi, my jazz friends from all over the world. Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. Today I'll be showing you how to get away from this, uh, these ever same, maybe boring B flat uh, blues chords and show you more advanced chords. We're gonna cover chordal voicings, passing chords, diminished chords, and uh, 13 flat 9 chords, and how to uh, play a great rhythm too because that's also important. You can download all the lesson material like the um, tab and the uh, backing tracks from the link down below in the description box and now let's get bluesy! We have a, a 12 bar jazz blues standard form, like in every normal uh, jazz blues. If you don't know the chord progression, then this may be a little too advanced for you. Please go back to the uh, jazz blues in B flat guitar chords lessons. I actually have more on those up here on my YouTube channel. All right, uh, here are the first four bars. We start with a B flat 13 sus chord, okay? Just the upper four strings. Here is the root, actually here it is again, right? On beat one and, let it ring through the four and and we change to the E flat 13 chord with a D flat in bass. So this is not our standard E flat nine chord, but the E flat 13 chord that's used a little uh, not not that much um, And now what we can do is we can go over to play an E diminished chord Usually that happens in bar six. We can also play it whenever we have the E flat the fourth degree Okay, so this is like an E flat seven flat nine chord a D flat or E um, diminished chord, right? So we go from one and two three four one two and now I syncopate all the next chords. We are now back to B flat. And what I can do is I play a B flat 6 9 chord. That's like it belongs actually to the major group. Right? I played without the root but with the third in bass. Just the inner four strings. Actually, it's a neutral chord. It doesn't have any seventh in there. And since it doesn't have, it can be dominant chord too. It doesn't sound very dominant though, but it's a nice quarter voicing, like a D minor 11 it also is, okay? And now I use, go to the E minor 11, which is a C6 9, or because the B flat is still in the bass, it's actually just a passing chord. You can use pretty everything as a bass, passing chord. It depends on how long it lasts. But this one actually also fits over the B flat because it gives you a B flat major seven sharp 11 chord. That's pretty nice actually. So for a passing chord, very good. And one to the right and we go to B flat seven sus four. Again, always compare it to the B flat. So we're back on B flat again. And now I'll make a little descending movement. Right? B flat 13, here's the root again. This comes, all these chords come from the basic tension chords and I just add a top note to it. Then I play an um, E9 that goes to the E flat 9. Actually that E9 is a triton substitution and it's also a B flat 7 sharp 5 flat 9. Right? And it leads perfectly to the E flat 9, but that's the next phrase. So let me uh, play that first phrase at slow tempo. One, two, three, four, one. You can help to keep the free video tutorials of this channel running by becoming a member of the channel and you can do so by clicking the join button right next to the subscribe button which also grants you access to my mini lessons. You can also say a little thank you by clicking the thanks button and donate a little something. This really helps with the productions of the videos. Thanks a lot. Phrase two starts with that said uh, E flat nine that I already played in the previous one, previous phrase. And now we go to the E flat 13 with the D flat in bass again. Next bar, 
we have the E diminished. I still play that E flat 13. And now at count three and I go over to that E diminished or D flat diminished, which is the same thing. So I kind of postpone it a bit. And now we have um, the one to six um, progression. One is B flat, of course. Uh, again, I go to the B flat six nine chord. And now I add the B, a B flat, a little melody tone on top. I kept the first chorus with more just chords and the second one has a little more melody in there. And now that leads me to G altered. Now I have a really nice chord for you, G 13 flat nine. Not sure if you know that. <clears throat> Here's the root. G 13 is an unaltered chord and the sixth degree, which we are on right now, um, demands an alteration. The flat 9 on top is an alteration, the 13 is not. So this is, I call this kind of half altered. But we can use it actually. It's a great sounding chord and there's more to this chord. I can move it up in three, three frets up. One, two, three, and another time, one, two, three, and another time. This is not a symmetrical chord though. So if you move it up, you don't get a G13 flat 9 again. But all these chords when moved up, are altered chords, except for the first chord, which is a half altered. If I move it up, which I do, to the sixth fret. Now, there's no G in there, mind you, so you gotta memorize where your root is, okay? Here, and it would be here. Um, this now gives you a G um, seven flat nine chord, all right? Which is an altered chord, perfect. So that's what I do. And then we'll get to the C minor in the next phrase. Okay, here's phrase number two at slow tempo. Three, four. And here are the last four chords of the first chorus, the two, five, and one, six, two, five. Okay, the two chord, I play a C minor nine here. I guess you know this one. Here's the root. Would be, it's a virtual root, we don't play it. I mostly play upper chords here. Um, and this one goes to the C minor 11, all right? Yeah. And that takes me to a chord maybe that you don't know, F13 sharp 11. That's a fancy one. This is derived actually from this, I don't know if you know this one, F9 flat 5. I don't play the root and add the 13 instead. Now what I have is a 7th, a 9th, a, a sh sharp 11, very cool, and a 13. That's a piano voicing actually. And now what I do is I play with the quadral voicings again. I wanna go to B flat, right? <clears throat> because now we have that turnaround, one, six, two, five in half bars. So what I do is, I have a chromatic approach from the, that's like an A6-9 to the B-flat 6 nine, 9 Now that A6-9 A is in the middle of the bar. So I have one, two, three, four, and syncopated B-flat. Now the B-flat is correct, but the A, now let's analyze that A. This is also like an F sharp minor 11 chord and this would be a G minor 11 chord. So that's another way to see it. But let's come, uh, let's um, see what it does against the F. What we got, got a third for the F. We get the sharp 11. We get a major seven. So this one shouldn't be in a dominant chord. And we got the uh, third. And that was not the third, sorry. <laughs> that's not the A, that was the uh, flat nine. So we get an F7 sharp, flat 9 sharp 11 chord with a major 7 in there, which doesn't belong in there, the E. It should be an E flat. But the thing is just a passing chord, right? I mean, it lasts a little longer than it should as a passing chord. That's why I syncopate the next one. But it gives a little tension, you know? It's like an F altered chord with a little passing note in there. It's really great. You can do, you can play every passing chord, um, all passing chords, 
but they have to resolve. If it resolves, it doesn't resolve, it doesn't matter, right? Now that's the beginning of the one, six, two, five. Now with the B flat, one, six, I guess you know that G7 sharp nine chord. The two, C minor nine again. And the five is an F um, sharp nine flat 13. Here's the root. It's like an F7 sharp nine with the flat 13 or sharp five on top. And that leads me uh, to the beginning of the next chorus, B flat 13. All right, now let's, uh, let me play those uh, last four bars again. Two, three, four. Now for the second chorus, I try to um, make more melodic phrases, incorporate more melodic phrases into it, while the first chorus was more block chords. All right, <clears throat> we, we ended it here on a B-flat 13-9 chord, and now I make a melodic phrase. I play a B-flat 9 sus 4 chord, I guess maybe you know this one, and I just move the, um, the B-flat up an octave. And now First I was thinking, okay, let's make this movement, but then I thought, just, just play the melody here. Gives it a more, I mean, it doesn't interfere with the soloist. It's just one tone. It's not that much, right? Um, then we go to the E flat. And again, I, I chose that E flat 13. It sounds really very sophisticated. And now what I do is, again, I think in block chords, but played every second tone as a melody. I was thinking this chord, then the E flat 9 chord, and then the E flat uh, 9 chord up here. But this is really tricky to play it fast, and I wanted to get it more dynamically. Um, dynamic. So what I do is I just play the melody here. Then I move up. I don't play the root here on that G, uh, E flat 9 chord. And then I bar over and play the 13th of the chord. So it's an E flat 9, 13 chord, right? And now I have a real nice melodic phrase. As long as you don't do that every bar, every measure, then that's okay. Now, otherwise it would be too busy. Yeah. And that resolves to the B flat and I take the B flat 9, so 4, like in the beginning. And then that big nine style thing going to the B flat 6 9 chord as for the dominant chord and go I go over the A right and now I want the real B flat dominant chord again and I choose that B flat 13 flat 9 chord that we already had and I move it up three frets I do a little scratching in between right leads me to the E flat 13 in the next phrase okay let me repeat that one, two, three, four. Phrase five is really cool. We now get to the uh, the next four bars. E flat, the fourth degree, E flat 13. The E flat on top, not the ninth. <clears throat> because now what I want to do is I go over to the E flat 13 flat 9 again I alter it a bit that half altered chord which we can do on the fourth degree and now I have that E diminished chord I play D flat diminished that's the same play it twice and three down, one, two, three, takes me to B flat diminished, which is also E diminished. As long as you have the E in the chord, right? It's always an E diminished chord. And now it gets real interesting. I go to a B flat 9, 13 chord. We had this on the E flat before. This comes from this B flat 9 chord. Don't play the B flat, but play the 13 on top. So B flat 9, 13 chord. Now, I experimented a bit with moving chords up and down a neck for uh, ne a fretboard. Now let's try to move this up three and see what happens. One, two, three frets, 
and what we get is a really cool sound, a B flat, uh, flat nine, sus four uh, sound. This should be, yeah. Here's the flat nine, here's the sus, and that's the fifth and the uh, root. So that comes, it's the second mode of the melodic minor scale. That's really an awesome sound. Again, the B flat shouldn't be altered actually. This one isn't, this is a mixer chord, B flat 13, uh, 9. But uh, this one is, but that's okay. I mean, in modern jazz, it's allowed. You can, you just alter whatever you want. And these are all passing chords actually. So, um, and I just play them straight now. I, I try to have a little, little difference compared to the beginning of the second chord, where, uh, chorus where it was all busy with these melodic phrases. Now I go back to block chords on one and three. That's one, that's three. One, three, and now I go to G altered. And remember, we had this was the G 13 flat nine chord down here. One, two, three up, it's G7 flat nine. That's where I start now. And I go up three again. One, two, three. And this gives me a G7 sharp nine. Yeah, sharp nine chord. That's the fifth, doesn't change anything. So, B flat, flat nine sus four, G7 flat nine, G7 sharp nine. I'll play it on beat one and on beat, th beat three. That's it. Okay, phrase five, it's low tempo. Two, three, four. And here are the last four bars already. C minor seven, traditional chord. Here's the C, C minor nine. Going down, it, you should really have this next uh, two bars, that's a two five, into your pocket because it's very popular. Going to an F13 flat nine chord. Here's the F7 flat nine. If you don't know a chord in the upper section, just try to find one from the E or A string. Here's the F7 flat nine. Um, don't use your um, uh, the root and add something on top that adds to the chord, more color to the chord, like that, uh, that uh, 13. So now we have an F13 flat nine chord. That's cool. And now I'll make a little melody to the B. That's just a passing tone. Oh, C sharp, sorry. I'm going to the five of the chord, and now we have a C7 flat nine in the shape of an A diminished chord. A or C diminished or whatever diminished. Right? And so this one memorizes this. Because it's easy and it sounds good. And now we go to a more modern stuff again. B flat 13 with the B flat on top. Going to the A flat, a little melody here. I tried to uh, add a motif in the last two bars. Now, what we have here now is a D flat nine chord. Actually, the, the last four uh, chords would be one, Six, that would be a G altered chord, C minor and F7, altered or non-altered. So what I do here is, the, here's the one chord, and this one is a tritone substitute now. D flat nine. I don't play the root though, just these three. And that substitutes for G, right? If you think the G, then this is a G augmented chord, G7 sharp five. So you could name it whatever you like, okay? Then I move down to the C, so instead of a C minor, I just go down, play the C9 flat five, and add the little melody on the E. Go down to the B9 flat five, which substitutes for the F again, tritone away is the F, and then one down to the B flat, and that's the first chord the last and the first of the next one and that's a, with the root in bass okay so let me play this at slow tempo three four
put Jazz Blues playlist up here on my YouTube channel, check it out. And if you are not that advanced and we're just sneaking into that advanced lesson, I have a Jazz Blues starter pack on my uh, website, on my lesson shop, guitarversum.com. Check it out. Please give this video a fat thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps with the algorithm. And I hope to see you next week. Servus, Baba. Thank you.